some of the things that we're going to cover here in part two of the shooting and tuning is going to be the parts of the valve, fill pressure, some terms like uh, valve lock, preload on the spring, hammer weight, uh, hammer bounce, and what effect those things have on opening and closing this valve. First of all, the uh, valve itself. Um, this type of valve the Air Force uses is called a pop-it or a knock-open valve. Now, that simply means that this valve is activated whenever the hammer strikes the bolt slide, which in turn strikes the, the top hat, the valve head, and releases a burst of air that launches your pellet. All right, um, parts of the valve. The top hat here, is followed down in the valve body by the valve stem which has the valve seal attached to the end of it which has the valve return spring which assists the valve in closing and the valve retaining nut that holds the valve return spring in place. Now whenever you first get one of these Air Force air guns the first thing that you're going to do of course is fill your tank up. All right, whether it's a 13 cubic inch tank like this one here, the smaller one, or the larger standard size tank, they're both going to be rated for 3,000 PSI. All right, now most people are going to want to fill that up to the 3,000. You know, that's, that's what it says, right? So you can certainly do that. But chances are, uh, to some degree, you are going to encounter something called valve lock. All right, and valve lock simply means that you have so much pressure inside the tank that it becomes difficult for the valve to open sufficiently to launch the, 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 the pellet uh, at a rate that's going to be a usable shot for you. So usually what's going to happen is whenever you start to, to do your first shot string, the first one or two or possibly even three shots from a 3,000 PSI fill are going to be unusable. Now what you want to do whenever you, you start writing down your first shot string, which, uh, which this assumes that you have a chronograph, which if you don't have a chronograph you, you need to get one of those. These are, these are they're very, very necessary in order to, to get a, a tune on these guns so you can track what your numbers are and, and also what your, the adjustments that you make, what benefits that brings. All right, so you're going to find that at some point, whenever you get to a lower pressure, usually it varies gun to gun, but usually it's going to be from like 2,700, possibly up to 29, but most of the time it's, it's at around 2,700 is going to be a good beginning fill pressure. And that's going to begin a shot string that is going to be a usable shot. Like we, we discussed before, the average uh, shot from uh, 750 to 800 feet a second is usually what you can expect out of the Talon P. All right, so, so what you want is to start tracking those numbers, and then whenever they get close to the, the 750, you want to go back and you want to look at the gauge and don't trust do not trust these gauges on this, okay? These little gauges, these are nice and all to have on there, you know, for, for just a basic look at what's going on in your tank, but don't trust that. Go ahead and put the, put the, uh, your tank, hook it back up whenever you're at that, that number that is your first usable shot. Put the tank back on your, your fill whip and pump it up until you see where it starts to pump up and then make a note of what that number is and if that number is, is 2700 2600 whatever it is that's where you want to fill okay that once anything past that you're you're wasting your air okay it's, it's not going to yield a, a usable shot so at that point you want to start keeping track of your numbers and you'll notice as the fill pressure on your gauge here starts to go down it's going to peak usually on these guns on average again it's going to peak around 2000 psi all right after 2000 psi it's going to start to decrease all right your shot count is going to start to decrease again 
hopefully um, you'll have a, 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 a shot spread deviation of, you know, on average of, of maybe uh, five to, to five to eight uh, feet per second, you know, different spread on that. Now, a professional tuner can tighten that up a lot better, you know, but that's usually what you're going to encounter. And at that deviation, it's not going to make a great deal of difference in, in your grouping um, unless you really start to stretch it out there. You know, up close, 25 yards, even out to 50 yards, you, you're gonna, not going to, on a, on a five-point deviation, you're not going to, um, you're not going to, you're not going to notice any, any noticeable change in the point of impact where the bullet strikes. All right, now, once you have it dialed in and you know what your, your max fill pressure is for usable shots and you know where to stop and refill again, at that point, you can try to fine tune this thing a little bit better by adjusting two different things. One is going to be the power wheel here that we talked about a little bit before. All right, this power wheel, it puts preload on the spring. All right, there's a point that the preload is going to become a detriment instead of a benefit to you, and that point is where you, and you'll notice it again on your readings on your chronograph. It's going to your shot count or your, your deviation is going to start to deteriorate whenever you get too much preload on here and you start to experiencing something called hammer bounce. All right, what hammer bounce is is whenever whenever this hits this so hard and you have a lot. Not only whenever. It, it hits the valve head, but you also have a continuous pressure of the preload on on every, on this this uh, this hammer that it continues to push on it even after the valve is open, and it causes hammer bounce, which means this valve is going to open to some degree, not once but twice, uh, maybe even three times for for two little delayed bursts of air, which is wasting air. And for one thing, and it's, it's going to wreak havoc on, on your accuracy and your shot count. All right, so ideally, you want just enough pressure here, all right, to open up this valve consistently and and have a have a, have a decent shot count, decent decent uh, spread on, on your feet per second. All right, um, hammer weight. Now, hammer weight can help you open this valve too, especially at the higher pressure. Um, the the Talon P, the Condors, Condor SS are going to come. This one doesn't have one on it right now, but it does come with a an extra hammer weight, which is going to assist you in opening up that valve at higher pressures. But you need to keep in mind that whenever you have that hammer weight in here, that it's going to automatically give you a certain amount of preload on the spring. Okay, so um, if you're used to shooting without a hammer weight, and let's say you order one or, or have one made by someone, um, this power wheel is going to need to, to be reduced in order to compensate for the preload. All right, and a hammer weight is definitely a benefit. A lot of people, um, like the, the tune professional tuners, like, uh, like Talon Tunes, can give you a heavier hammer, and they can, uh, it, it'll, it'll definitely be a benefit to you in opening up, especially at the higher pressures. All right, um, some of the, uh, the things that can, as far as troubleshooting goes, this valve, we already discussed the, the, the gap here, how important that is. Now, these valve heads, the, the top hat that comes, comes from, from the factory on these guns are adjustable. All right, and I mentioned before that they are notorious for for coming loose here, okay, and unscrewing. And it, if if you want to buy something uh, for your gun that is going to be a enhancement, one of the best things you can do for your gun is to buy a one-piece top hat valve stem. All right, that is that is the best investment that you can make for these particular guns because whenever you do that. You don't have to worry about this thing. These these adjustment screws coming loose, and you know it, it is what it is. And uh, again, you can get one of those from Tony at Talon Team. So he, he does good good quality work over there, and that is going to be uh, a great benefit to you. And another thing that I want to briefly mention is uh, talk about ammunition for these guns. Um, 
There is an array of, of different different size pellets for each caliber, uh, different different types, different styles, different designs. But by far, the best pellet that I've ever come across, and most of you will probably agree, is these Exact Kings. All right, this is a Diablo type pellet that has a skirt on it. These are very consistent in, in size and, and weight, and I haven't run across any gun, any air gun that doesn't like these things. Okay, um, the the Beeman, uh, the Benji Domes are, are good as well. Uh, for a heavy pellet, the engines are are, are, are good, but um, for the most part, for the most part, these Exact Kings are are definitely uh, a, a safe bet you know to invest in as far as ammunition and good good consistent shots all right uh, I know this has been kind of brief um, and brief is good compared to that first video I ran a little long but um, anyway again I hopefully it's been a benefit to you uh, this is by no means the gospel truth um, this is the gospel truth as far as my own personal experience with these guns if anyone has any other things that they would like to add in the comments section I invite you to please do that anything you can share can can help others um, including myself so um, thank you again for watching